Okay, uh, previously we showed you how to drive the ring uh, and clear the residue uh, and we've got the mark down to the three inch depth so we've already done that so now I'm going to show you uh, how to go ahead and remove that ring and we do need to be a little bit careful. The other thing is to make sure because we're measuring uh, uh, unit of volume, uh, weight per unit of volume so I want to make sure that I've driven it evenly so I'm right at two inches all the way around the edge so that so my ring isn't crooked and then we're simply to do this we're going to go ahead and have to excavate around the ring and what we want to do is try to keep all the soil in that volume which is a three this is a three inches of depth for this particular three and it's a three inch diameter so we're going to go ahead and excavate it uh, now that we've excavated around the edge of the ring, I want to make sure to get my trowel. In some cases I've seen people use a, a tile spade as well underneath the ring. We don't want to lose any soil. Okay. So when we do this, we also need to be careful that we cover the top so we don't lose any soil from the top. Okay. Okay. And then so we have the exact amount we need. We have a, in your bucket, or you can get this out of your kitchen drawer, a knife. And we want to go even to the bottom of the ring, like that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make sure to have something underneath the bottom so I don't lose any of my soil. And I pick up a clean Ziploc bag. And go ahead and we're going to put the soil again into the bag. So the importance here is that we get the exact volume of soil. So we, if we lose some of the soil, we may have to redo this. So. So we want to be pretty close to exact to that three inch mark as well as the diameter of the ring. Then I can use the knife to go ahead and make sure all the soil cleans out. In some cases you might use the same ring you use for infiltration. So now I've went ahead and got everything in the Ziploc bag. I go ahead and close it and you want to label it. In this case this is a the compacted row or, or wheel traffic row and then you go to the next part of the field and collect it as well and then we're ready to go to the lab. Now we just got back from the field and we have our sample that we pulled from the bag and we have Virginia Jen with ARS, a research soil scientist is going to help us through step 6 through 11 in, in the guide. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and weigh our sample bag and record its weight in table two with the soil in. The next step is to go ahead and weigh an identical clean empty bag and record that in table two. Next step is to go ahead and weigh an empty microwavable, in this case we're using a tray, if you have a cup, something that's uh, microwave safe and then record its weight in table two. Okay, and then the next step is to go ahead and take our, our sample bag. We're going to mix the sample thoroughly by kneading it with your fingers. You can tell Virginia's done this quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're going to take our 1 8 ounce uh, level scoop of the loose soil that's not packed down but struck off level at the top. Okay, and then place it in, in the tray. And we're going to go ahead and weigh uh, that moist subsample before drying it. Okay. So now, and then record that. Now we're ready to go ahead and place uh, the uh, tray with the soil in the microwave. We're going to place the tray containing uh, this subsample and we're going to dry it for at least two four minute cycles at medium power. Now we've went through our first four minute cycle. We're going to go ahead and weigh 
the subsample. Okay. Now after our first cycle, we're going to go ahead and record that uh, on some notes and we're going to go ahead and dry it through one more four minute cycle. Okay, now we've ran, just got through our second four minute drying cycle at medium power. We're going to weigh it and compare it. So in this case, we, we changed moisture just a little bit, so we're going to have to go through a third cycle. Okay, we've just completed our third drying cycle, and we're going to compare it to the weight that we recorded from our second cycle. In this case, it's weighing exactly the same at 153 grams, so we're going to go ahead and record that weight in table two in column F. Okay, now that we've got a dry uh, weight of the soil plus the, the tray, we're going to go ahead and, and finish our calculations following the example. Uh, in in it, this case, uh, we go ahead and go through the example. We're going to take the, the dry weight of the soil uh, minus the or the weight of the moist soil minus the dry weight of the soil divided by the dry weight and that gives us the grams of water uh, per gram of soil. And then we run through the bulk density calculations uh, basically all the way through to where you determine the grams per cubic centimeter squared. Once we've done that, completed those calculations, we're going to go on to uh, table three and we're going to use the same information that <coughs> we recorded for, uh, off of table two or determined. Uh, we're going to determine soil water content. So we take the soil water content by weight from table two in grams per gram. Uh, we take the bulk density we recorded, which is 1.2 grams per cubic centimeters, and then determine the using the formula, the volumetric water content. And then from that, uh, we take the volumetric wa water content times 12 inches of soil depth so we can get the, the uh, soil water content in inches per foot. After that step, table three, we're going to go on to table four and determine soil porosity. And again, soil porosity, we talked about that earlier. So we take, the, again, the, the grams per cubic centimeter, the bulk density. Uh, we run through the calculation of uh, 1 minus soil bulk density divided by 2.65, which is the density of rock. And then we get a soil porosity. In this example, it's 54.7% pore space, which is pretty good. Ideal, uh, ideal soil would have 50% or more pore space. Uh, next, we're going to determine soil water uh, filled pore space and taking the volumetric water from that we determined from table three and then the soil porosity that we determined from table four in decimal 0.547 in your example it determines uh, volumetric water content which is divided by soil porosity times 100 uh, to give us a soil water filled pore space. So from that uh, you've determined quite a few things our porosity, soil water content, soil water filled pore space to determine what's, if we've got an ideal situation for microbial activity, our bulk density uh, determination, we would compare that back to the ideal bulk density that you'd have for your soil texture and also in the table it lists if you have a bulk density at what level would it impact root growth so you want to do that with your students and uh, drive home the importance of bulk density tied to compaction tied to, uh, to all the so important soil functions and, and processes that occur.